PowerPoint 2010. In this tutorial we're going to talk about using hyperlinks and creating hyperlinks. There are several ways to do it and hyperlinks are a pretty useful thing. Um, just keep in mind that what a hyperlink really is, it's, it's a way of giving a set of instructions to a piece of text or an image to, to link it to another file and that's how the internet works, all the links we have are just a way of, of giving instructions to the computer to say when somebody clicks on this piece of text take me to this file or take me to this part of a file. So what we're going to take a look at is the three kind of easiest ways to, to create hyperlinks. The very first way is if you just click in here to add text and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start typing start type w, actually I'm going to start I'm going to HTTP colon slash slash like I would if I were typing in an address bar. Now often you can skip this on an address bar and you can actually skip it here too. I'll show you that in just a second. But I'm going to then type copyright dot gov. See that's a, and I hit the space bar. That's a, a URL or a web address that I can remember pretty easily. I can just type it in and when I do that it um, uses the spell check function of PowerPoint to analyze the text and say this is probably a hyperlink, probably a web address, let's make it a hyperlink. The trouble with that is it also, if I type in something like PowerPoint will analyze that and will also recognize it as a, as a link and it probably isn't. We'll chat, test that in just a second. Um, the third way you can create a hyperlink, and this is one of the things that I like, is if you go to the web, if you, uh, not go to the web, but if you go into the insert ribbon, on the insert ribbon there's a hyperlink button. I'm going to click that hyperlink button, and then it gives me a toolbar that I can, or a, a little dialog box that I can use to create a hyperlink. We're going to come back to this in just a moment, because I first want to show you what happens here. So I'm going to click in here, open up my web browser, and I'm actually going to select the Stanford um, Frequently Asked Questions. Now this is a great page, it's really terrific, but if you look at the address in the address bar, it's long and complex as underscores and all kinds of other stuff that are kind of hard for me to remember. So if I put my cursor in there, it'll automatically select all the text in there like it just did, and then I can just right click and copy or use the keyboard shortcut control v, um, control C on my keyboard. And then I'm going to go back to PowerPoint and I can just paste that. And when I hit the space bar, it'll uh, analyze it with the spell check and recognize it as a link. Now the trouble is, if you don't want your link to look ugly, that's when you use that other little dialog box that I was showing you. So I'm going to type something in here. I'm going to just type in Stanford Fair use frequently asked questions, because that's what that is. And I'm going to highlight that text, go to my insert ribbon, and choose the hyperlink button. Or there's a control K, you notice is a keyboard shortcut for it, which lists it right there. Or I can right click on anything I've highlighted and usually choose hyperlink. So you've got three different ways you can create the hyperlinks, but I, I'm just going to stick with this hyperlink button because it's always there pretty much. Then you'll notice here I have some different options of where I can hyperlink to. In our case, we're going to go to an existing file or web page. Now that file doesn't have to be out on the internet. It could be a file in your documents folder or somewhere on your computer. Since mine is the, a web address, I'm going to just type the address in there. Or I'm going to paste it in. Apple v, or, uh, Control V on your, on your PC. And click OK. So now that is a hyperlink. Same hyperlink as this, but it just looks prettier. So that's how you do that is you type your text in and you can create a hyperlink. Now I'm going to go to the slideshow view because these hyperlinks won't work. You notice I can't click on them and go to the web sites. So let's go to the full screen view by clicking on the begin slideshow, this slide button. And I click on the copyright.gov. It opens up my web browser and takes me right there. And I can close that tab, close the whole thing, ask if I want to close all the tabs. I'm going to go ahead and close all those tabs, and here's why. Uh, I'm going to cho choose the uh, Mitchell is the coolest.net, click on that, and can't locate it. So that's not a real web, web address. 
and uh, so I'm just going to close that little dialog box give it a second then I click on this standard fair use one the big long one it opens up takes us right to that site. The reason I wanted to show you that if I close all the browser windows, if I am done with this, I showed what I need to do on this site during my presentation, I can then close the browser window, or my participants can close it if they're doing it on their computer, and you're right back to the full screen PowerPoint. And now you'll also notice that even though this says something different, when I hover over it, it shows me the the uh, the web address that's going to go to, and that's the same on all these. And if I click on this one, even though it says standard fair use fact, it's going to take us to that web address that we hyperlinked it to. So I'm going to close this and let's pop out of here and take a look at another thing we can do. Something else I can do is I could, if I wanted to, insert a shape. I'm going to click on the shape button. I'm just going to pick a kind of a nice little rectangle, choose this kind of rounded off rectangle. And I click and drag to draw it in. And there's my rectangle. Now that my rectangle is in there, I can click the hyperlink button. And so even though it's not a piece of text, it's a, it's a shape, I can still hyperlink it. Now, before I was hyperlinking to a file or web page, and so I could do that again. I could paste right in there. We'll go ahead and do that. The standard fair use uh, web address we already have in the clipboard. Click OK. I check the full screen view of this, and you'll notice it is definitely that. You'll also notice it shows me the web address that it's going to go to. When I hover over it, it shows that web address. I'm going to press the escape button to go back to the main PowerPoint page. And the other thing I want to show you about this is if I click on the hyperlink button, it brings up that same um, dialog box already has my hyperlink in it. But I'm going to do something else here. I have something that's called a screen tip. I can click on that and I can type in some other kind of screen tip. Instead of it being the web address, I can type in Stanford Fair Use FAC. Frequently asked questions. So I'm going to click OK, I'm going to click OK, and go back to our full screen view to see how this really works. So now when I mouse over this one, you see that it shows my, me the web address. When I hover over or mouse over this one, it doesn't show me the web address. It tells me that it's a Stanford Fair Use Frequently Asked Question. It kind of works the same as uh, the uh, screen tips or the alt code you use for um, a web address. It's pretty useful. It's kind of a nice little tool. Now finally though, I want to show you that I can insert a shape and hyperlink it to something else. So I'm going to put a different shape in. Let's pick a circle, a more circular one this time. Let's do an oval, and I'll draw my little circle in there. And then I'm going to choose the hyperlink button on the insert ribbon. And I can go to a place in this document. This place in this document will let me go to the Internet Safety and Ethics, my first page. So I'm going to do that and click OK. So that if I wanted to, I could create kind of a, a back button right here. And it doesn't have a, a screen tip because there's not one that's create it automatically. I'd have to create one manually that I showed you on the last shape. But I can click on this and it takes me back to the beginning. And I can go through the slideshow again. So those are some of the ways you can use hyperlinks and some of the things you can do with hyperlinks. And just keep in mind you can hyperlink to pretty much anything you can put on the page. You can put on clip art or photos or word art, any of those. If you can select it, you can usually right click it. Oops. Right click without moving your mouse. Uh, right click and edit uh, that hyperlink or create a hyperlink and you can work with it. Um, and just a reminder that the options for what you can hyperlink to are available on this hyperlink dialog box and you can hyperlink to a file or web page any place in this document based on the titles of your um, slides. You can actually have it create a new document of various different types and change what kind it's going to create. You can also have a hyperlink to an email address if you'd like to do that and also even have it automatically generate a subject line. This allows you to create some pretty powerful um, learning objects that students can work on themselves. I'm going to click cancel on this because I don't want to make any changes. And that is hyperlinking for you on PowerPoint 2010.